man by his throat. Hey, buddy, sit back. Some of some totals doing fine. All right. I'm Andrew Gardner. Um, I'm one of the bee's knees. I'm also uh, actually one of your boys too in the Sterling Jade Reserve, which I'm really uh, proud and happy to be part of that. Mike and uh, this is my partner here, Ryan, man. Ryan Coolen. Yeah. yeah. Sterling boy. He's also a member of Sterling Jade Birds. Right on, right on. Yeah. yeah, well, these boys, as I said, they play along with me and my band, Sterling Jade Birds. It's a ton of fun. These guys are hands down the funnest, best slash best musicians around to be, you know. Um, talks are great, music flow is good, we have lots of interests the same, and it's just nothing but good times when we're around. So I want to dig into a little bit into the band, boys. So how did the band come about? <clears throat> the bee's knees here. Just from right in this garage here, man, just plunking away with me between you guys. I mean, with us being in the, the Jaybirds there, yeah. I mean, we just kind of, well, you know me, I always sang these old songs, so... I think so uh, Ryan just plunking on that bass man just matches up perfect. It does. Really, it does. <laughs> the, the style between your your playing, like I, I met Andrew probably f six years ago now, seven yeah. years ago, and I tell you, man, he has this twenty style that we're gonna jump into here soon. We're gonna talk about that. I really want to find out where he got it from, but uh, he's got this twenty style and this yodel and this always a harp and on his face, and he just got this amazing style. So I understand with the bass along with it, it just brings the bottom end in. And you were saying to me earlier that when you play with Ryan, you play a little bit different. I do. It's just like when I'm playing myself, I play a little more up here kind of thing. But when he's playing, now I'm trying to hit some more higher stuff a little bit. Changes my beat a little bit, but it's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> so what do you? So what's your thought on the on the whole twenty style thing? I the twenties thing is uh, I don't want to say it was super new to me because I obviously have always loved all eras of music, but. When I joined the Jaybirds, it was shortly after that. We jammed here a lot, actually. So, uh, well, let's put this in a little bit of perspective. Thank you, Andrew. You just had a birthday a couple, couple days ago, did, and you're forties plus, right? Oh, yeah. and, and Ryan, he just had a birthday a little while ago, and you're what? How old are you? Thirty. Thirty. So yeah. there's probably like a 15, 15 year oh, gap yeah. there. So there's a whole different, you know, when you grow up in a genre. So like when you were growing up, Andrew, what kind of music was like popular? Like was it? Like, say, say when you were like 
16 to 20 years old, what's that popular music? Okay. What, what was like, was it grunge? Yeah. You know? Like, there was what? all kinds of weird stuff. It was all like, I was in the 80s, right? Yeah. When I was a little kid. So there was a lot of different yeah. stuff. Like, yeah. And I didn't listen to any of it. <laughs> I, like, I like some of it now that I look back. It kind of reminds me of old times and stuff. But uh, at that time, I did not really care for it. But yeah. I liked... Uh, I like a lot of old folk and stuff, like listen to my dad's old records and stuff. You know, yeah, so, like Bob Gilly, Neil so let, Young. let's get into that. How did like how did you get into this 20s style of music? Was it your dad's record sitting around that you could start digging through or what happened there? My Uncle Andy, he used to always uh, he was a big movie guy and he used to play all these old movies like from back in the old times. But he loved all the Jimmy Rogers, like the Charlie Pool, all this old time music and uh, I always heard it from him, but I never really did anything with it. And then, uh, well, obviously this combo here, guitar and harmonica, what are you gonna do? Like, it's either folk or something like that. So it was something that I could uh, mess around with and I come up with, with it and I fell in love with it, man, I love it. So your go-to of, your go-to of music, like, like give us, give us like five, five artists that you love to cover. Like what? Oh, definitely like Dylan. Uh, some Neil Young but, stuff. But, but, but say that right. It's not Dylan yeah. that people like. You like, you like very B-side Dylan, right? Yes, I like uh, everything I like is the B-side. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why they're the B's yeah. knees, right? Yeah. They like, love to play the B-side of everything they can. Uh, so Again, like the Jimmy Rogers, Jimmy Rogers. I love. I love uh, Charlie, oh, Poole. Charlie Poole for sure. I like... Uh, mm -hmm. But I like all kinds of weird stuff, man. I listen to all kinds of mixed up stuff. Even in the heavier country, like the Hank Williams. Oh, I love Hank Williams. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, stuff like that. All the, the Buck Owens, all that stuff. I don't know. So then you grew up in 90s area. Yeah. So we all know what the 90s area is because that's what we are. But That's right. So, so I grew up in the 90s, but to be honest, I watched, like I listened to a lot of music that my mom had, which 70s. was 70s. That's like right. Tracy Chapman. Yeah. And, um, uh, more of that stuff and then uh, I actually first got introduced to earlier stuff from a good friend of mine Donnie we used to sit around in his basement a lot when we were kids and his dad had hundreds of records yeah, hundreds good old of record records. pile I love that and that's what I grew up to he started pulling out records for me to listen to like the Boomtown Rats and you know like the Sex Pistols and then I got introduced to like the, the punk rock thing and uh, I played in a lot of punk bands. Yes, that's what I knew of you when I that's first. That's right. Yeah, you were you're you're yeah you're you're four anti four you. four or five younger than me, right? Or, yeah, I'm thirty. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know how old I am either. But anyway, so I always remember because I grew up with your brothers. That's right. And then you were the younger ones. I didn't really know you. And then it was awesome because I needed a bass player, and I was like Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Take the bass like this and go like uh, this. <laughs> this thing has been uh, one of the best things I've ever switched to in music. And it was an awesome switch, an easier switch because I was a bass player, but it's a whole different instrument. And uh, I thank you, to yeah. be honest. You pushed, me to, you pushed me to come play with you, and it's the best thing I ever did. I love this thing. You're, really you're awesome. honestly, you're an amazing fit for it. Look yeah. how tall you are. You That's right. Fit with it, <laughs> right? They, they designed it all right? for my height. It's got a big fat ass, you got a skinny one, right? <laughs> That's right. It makes up for it. <laughs> but no, man, you're amazing on it. Yeah. Like, really, well, thank you. And like you were saying, it's a major difference because bass, I remember when we first started, you were playing the bass, like a, like this kind of bass. That's right. So a normal bass guitar has like frets on it, like a guitar. So a guitar has frets on it, and this is fretless. Yeah. So there's a lot more of finding your place. But with a fretted instrument, and you play a bass this way, you're playing more of like root notes. Do, 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 do. But this is more of a chug, a walk. Like a do, That's do, right. do, 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 do. Yeah. And it's it took a little bit to get used to, it's but. It's one of those less is more yes. things. Yes. And this, yes. this instrument. 100% is the embodiment of less is more. Yes. Especially in the style of music. You don't yeah. need to do, you're not trying to be the showcase totally. anymore. There's too many instruments for you to stand out. You like he was saying, he plays different when you, because when you're not playing with him, he's going to play the bass line. Absolutely. And then yeah. now when you're not playing, you play the bass line with a walk. He's, That's right. He's, it opens up a whole nother genre. And yeah. like, you're amazing, but when you guys are together, it's, it's the bees yeah. knees, man. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right no, that's awesome. I really it's so cool. And he's just the best. Well, <laughs> I think I've ever met. I know. Honestly, yeah. yeah. I know. So Andrew, I know. Andrew. I Andrew. So when I when I met Andrew, I was just starting in my Jaybirds band, and we were playing like the folky, upbeat kind of stuff. But Andrew just like brought the twenties to me, and the style. He, Andrew's always got the hat. He's always got yeah, the, right. the the right shoes. That's he fits right. the era, and it's amazing. So. uh 
Yeah. Kudos to that, boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right on, dudes. Well, uh, you want to show me another song? Let's do it. Yeah, we'll try something. Yeah, we'll and, sit through uh, here. We'll... Joel from What's Happening Again. I'm here with Emily Mewitt and she's selling some honey today. So Emily, what can you tell me about this honey? So this is all local honey um, produced right here in Sterling and it's unpasteurized raw honey. Um, this is all liquid but we do offer creamed honey as well. Okay, so pasteurized honey to liquid, to liquid honey. What's the difference yeah. in that? Well, uh, liquid honey, this is just the liquid form. Right, right, honey. sorry, but what's pasteurized honey? So pure honey. Pasteurized honey is, um, it's the honey gets heated to a certain point where um, it eliminates a lot of the bacteria that's found in honey. Um, but it also, in doing so, eliminates uh, a lot of the nutrients. And the good stuff. The that's good right. stuff. So I've unpasteurized always, is where it's at. I've always heard if you have allergies, you should eat honey from your area because it should yeah. help you with your allergies because the bees right. are taking pollen from that, right? Yep, exactly. That's amazing. Yeah. So you guys, is this like a full-time job or is this a hobby for you guys? Uh, it's a full-time job for my dad. That's amazing. <laughs> and that's who? That, that's Peter Mewitt, right? Peter Mewitt, that's yeah. Awesome. He's the yeah. local beekeeper. He's a local beekeeper and he was actually most of our teachers from here in Sterling. So that's, that's another right. awesome, cool thing. So where can we locate and how can people get a hold of this honey? So um, the best the best way to go about it would be to go through my dad. Um, so you can either give him a call or send him an email. I don't know if you want. To yeah, you go ahead and see the email address or, right now, and then yeah. I'll, I'll type up the bottom, and we'll have it at the okay, bottom. Great. So what's the yeah. email address? So the email address is p muett. That's p m e w e t t at hotmail .com. That's awesome. Okay, so if you want some local non-pasteurized honey, 
from some great people here. We just seen the, the other Mewits over there with the cupcakes. So uh, keep it local and let's keep it, that's what's happening right now with Joel. Thanks guys. This one here is a Jimmy Rogers too. Probably from uh, mid 20s, maybe 27 or something like that. It's called, uh, it's called uh, Peach Picking Time. Where's Peach Picking Time in Georgia? Apple Picking Time in Tennessee. Pardon Picking Time in Mississippi. Everybody picks on me. Well, I'm here with Andrew Gardner from the Bees Knees, and uh, you're the lead singer and mastermind of it all here. So thanks for taking a minute with me. Right on, man. Thanks for uh, coming down and doing this. Yeah, I appreciate you awesome. having me in your garage tonight and having Cheers. a little smoky poo and a drink. That's yeah, man. Always fun here. It's good. So what do you got here for a guitar? This here is a Taylor 322E. 
Uh, it's like a solid wood guitar. It's they're pretty nice guitars. I think it's 12 fret. Um, the kind of guitar playing I do, I like. I don't use a pick. I just do uh, finger stuff. So it uh, it really has like a nice bass and and uh, sound to it for me, anyways. But it works for me. I don't know, but I I really like it. So a 12 fret. So like, yeah. how many frets does a guitar usually go down? Like, because I see. Oh, well, it's usually another two or something. Yeah, and so it's, know, it's, it's more of a parlor guitar. Is that what they call that then? Kind of like a parlor guitar. I think this is an older style of a guitar mm, kind neat. of a thing it's That's uh cool. it makes it a little easier like for for getting around here not that i do a lot of that but uh no it's it just makes a little bit of a different sound i think it's cool that's yeah. really beautiful yeah. i love it up here so yeah i I don't think it makes a big difference with it going in the head like that, but that's almost like um what do you call those classic. like a spanish like, guitar or yeah, a classic kind of guitar style head yeah um i think that is is kind of how guitars used to be made a long long time ago i agree and then they've changed uh over the years but they've incorporated this into this guitar and it's like uh it looks really nice anyways I yeah that's for sure difference in the sound so what would you call this like a ebony or rose or what, what like know, that? that's an ebony yeah. yeah that's ebony that's cool and you said there was a pickup in it then so there it's a it's, pickup down here it's right it's installed some uh some adjustments here you got a volume and a treble and a Bass, I think that's what it, it does, anyways. Yeah, uh, tone or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, does this one have a battery in it also, then, or no? You gotta, yeah, you got to put a battery in it. Which means it's got a preamp in it, which is nice because yeah. that helps out with going to the. And Taylor, from what I read, I don't know, they have their own um, pickup system. Okay. And it, it really does, uh, if you do run it through like the acoustic amp there and stuff like that, it sounds really rich. It does sound really nice. Yeah, they that, good, that, it does. They have a good system going on. That's for sure. Yeah. Cool. So on your neck there, we got, so harmonicas over here, you got a whole box full of harmonicas. Oh, yeah. I know myself, but some people might not understand. Why would a harmonica player have so many harmonicas? Well, every harmonica is its, it's its own key, right? So you got like A, B, C, D, and then you get all the flats. And every song is in an A or a B. So. And every, everybody's playing in a certain key. So in order to match them, you need to have the right key harp because you only got so much of a scale in the harp. It's diatonic, right? It's, it's, uh, that's the way it works. Not that I know too much about theory and music, but uh, they're all different. And uh, you can buy cheap ones and you can buy expensive ones. That's one of the regular old run of the mill ones. Those ones are probably like, well, they all gone up in price. That's probably like, 50 or 60 bucks or something like that. And then I like these, uh, these are probably my favorite ones. I've been buying these side L ones and uh, they are uh, 18, uh, 47 and they're, uh, well, they run you about 150 bucks a piece, but they really do have a nice tone. So let's break down a harmonica. What, how does a harmonica work? Is there reeds in it? Yeah, it's all reeds. So. So each one of these holes says one yeah. to. So what we got here? I'm trying to do this with my hand. One are, to ten. Which are great. So like the, marine bands. So there's ten point. reeds in that. Ten reeds. Or is there twenty because you can go both ways? Mm -hmm. That's right. You got twenty twenty reeds. So you you blow or you you pull, and uh, you get a different note on each. And each uh, each harp has its own uh, scale and stuff like that built into it, right? I don't really know all the theory, but. The old honers, a lot of these, they use brass reeds. These Seidel ones that I'm talking about here, at least these ones have uh, stainless steel reeds. Oh, so like, cause like back in like, so I'm thinking of a reed like a, like a, like a saxophone. That's like a wood reed. So it's oh, not a plastic or anything oh, like that. They're actually a metal reed in there metal, or stainless yeah. or a brass reed, like you're saying. Yeah. And they vibrate and make the sound, but they claim that those stainless ones last a little longer. So far, they've been lasting pretty good. Some of the other ones, they do blow a note or something like that once in a while, and then you gotta buy a new one. So, huh? It's not uh they're not they're not perfect forever. That's for sure. Can we uh, set the guitar down? And can we? Can you give us an example of, of like uh, like a like an A to a G harp or to yeah, a B sure. or? Can can we blow us a little. Guitar over here to, to Ryan for a second. Yep. Yeah. Like, give us a so, little tune. So for us. When we're playing, we keep it kind of simple. So we're playing and I'm using a C harp most of the time for the stuff we're doing. It just keeps it in a good range for the bass to play and stuff like that. So they're like, um,
So that would be like a C and then something like uh, play the same. Can you play the same song in a different key? So there's a G. So there's a lower chord. It just sounds different, and you get every key, right? So. So you'd be like playing a different key for, say, if somebody was singing in a different key, right? Like they had a big baritone voice. And, oh, 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 oh. This one here, I just bought. It's so hard to play because it's so low. This is a low C. So the first one I played you was regular C. This here is a low C. It says, it's like a bass. Oh, wow, yeah. Right? So this one you can get like, um, it's better when someone's playing something with you. You can kind of honk in the background some bass, but it's so low. Right? Yeah. So you can, you everyone you buy is different, and you can get them in flats and all these different. I notes, feel like but, I feel like that last one you're doing there. You almost took more air. Like oh, the reeds were oh, bigger yeah. in it. They're just so loose. So like just, every reed would be smaller for every key, right? Or, know, or they're smaller, bigger, bigger. They're just looser. Yeah. Like, because you're getting a lower tone, but it's uh, yeah, they do take more air. And cool. Then, like even stuff like. Uh, these chromatics they, they might be stuck but i'll just show you one anyways but what's this these are like that's actually a really old one that's a, a super harm super chromonica so you got a button Pinoa. on the side of it so that there is giving you your flats and your sharps and stuff so you get instead of having a diatonic skill you get a chromatic skill so this one here you can play whatever any instrument's playing you can match them with okay this. let's put a pin in that diatomic scale yes to what to chromatics and so what this this here has all the notes properly like kind of like a piano okay right? where the other one is a scale of its own so it has a select few notes and you'll be able to play in that key but this one here you can play in in probably any key any note so that'd be a good one to have in your pocket if you're going anywhere. Yeah, but this <laughs> takes a lot of air too. <laughs> Let's hear it. Quick one. Oh, it's sticking. Sorry. Oh, that was kind of neat though. Yeah, it's it's stuck. Too old, eh? But that's. <laughs> I, sorry, I can't give you the. But you can play like stuff like bass and street blues and things like that. So you get all those half notes and stuff like that. It's kind of cool, but unfortunately, it's stuck. Yeah, I was played for you. That's awesome, man. <laughs> well, we know you love your vintage stuff. Yeah. I gotta That's put cool. that in the pot of boiling water or something. Cool. So let's go over to let's take a look at this uh the three hundred dollar horn. The three hundred dollar horn. <laughs> what, what what so what it's like you told me earlier it is just a kazoo really, right? It is just a kazoo, man. So there's um just a hole in here with like a plastic reed or a... yeah, I guess I think it's like parchment paper pretty much. It, yeah, it's like a plastic little so there's one on each side or something like that so when you're blown through here you're you're really humming not blowing you're right humming you're making the sound you're almost singing the, the the sound or something like that and uh it's buzzing through here but with this horn it's also giving it a little bit of uh <laughs> wow wow wow, wow. wow. <laughs> let me so. hear the quick little <laughs> <laughs> So you can pretty much do, 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 yeah, do. You can, you can do whatever. Like you, you, I don't know, you try and make trumpet sounds or something like that, right? Yeah. But this one here actually has a little bit more of a mellow tone than, so the $300 one, I will give it some credit because this is the one we had first. <laughs> and this is the same horn, but in plastic pretty much, right? So this one's more, a little more sharp. It's more toyish sounding. Right. Very man, that's that thing. This one's more kazooie. Yeah. Yeah. And this one's more trumpety. Yeah. Know. That's nice. That's uh, nice. Something like you know. Yeah. So what you're doing there, you're just pretty much saying do 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 do. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. Cause I've and actually my my I won't mention his name, but he's pretty close to me, he might be Ken, but uh he can't play a kazoo. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean you can't play a kazoo? <laughs> he can play bones, a fiddle, and a banjo, but he can't yeah. play a kazoo. That's right. We'll teach him one of these nights here yeah. in this garage. I might give him the plastic one. 
Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, there's a lot of people who uh, I've seen make a lot of music out of those things. Like, I mean, I'm like nothing with this, but I've seen some people really blow some cool songs out of those. It's it, honestly, yeah. it, like I said, as soon as you started that, it sounded like an old, an old, uh, like. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have COVID, you do now. <laughs> All right, so we're back. Andrew just had a little foam up there. <laughs> that, wow. was, that was beautiful, man. That was so funny. Uh, I needed a good laugh. So like we were just saying right there, we'll go right back into this. When you started up that horn, it honestly sounded like, um, like an old 20s record player started up and it was just beautiful. I love the sound of it. Cool, it's man. too cool, man. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it. I, it is good. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't pay $300 for it. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta go to the States and just pick one up. So Source that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Ooh. awesome. So today we're down here at the, at the Belleville Market and we're here with Milton. And Milton is a local author and he is selling books down here. So Milton, can you tell us a little bit about these stories and what's going on? Well, uh, these are all written within the last six and a half years, and I have uh, started with this one, Memories, was my first book, and the uh, second book is uh, The Kid in the Man's Boots. <clears throat> it starts in 1900 and goes to 1922. This one starts in 1922 and goes to 2013. <clears throat> this one is about my father in the First World War. He was wounded in Passchendaele. This one is a, about my first cousin Don. He was a tail gunner in a Lancaster bomber. This one is a Scotch boy, Andy Beatty, came to Canada to my in-laws at 15 years of age, and he served in the Merchant Marines. They're all actual facts and no fiction. These are the four latest books. This one is 170 years of Tweed firefighters. This one is a history of Tweed and the 24 hamlets in the municipality. And it's written as a tour. After you read the book, if you follow the instructions in the book, it tells you how to get to each of the hamlets. Oh, wow. This one is a, a 90 local people that have lived 100 years. This one is my memories of working over at the Four Seasons in Ramada. I was there for 20 and a half years. This one is a little different. It's Canada 150. But Canada 150 only went back to the Confederation. And I... Uh, sent a copy of that one for the Queen and I received a letter from the Queen. Oh, wow. That's amazing. That's so cool. This is a copy. <coughs> copy of the letter I sent to the Queen with the book. That's amazing. I have Canada, Hastings County, Spelko, Potter Settlement, and Tweed. So I know it's, I've seen you back in Tweed at the at the grocery store. It's, it's, so you're a local Tweed man yourself? Born and brought up in Tweed. That's amazing. So these books here, what what are these books worth? How much would a book cost me if I were trying to buy one today? These are ten dollars. These are twenty. Okay. <laughs> It's amazing. And if somebody was trying to find one of your books, how would they be able to get a hold of you? Just come find you at the... I am here on the market on Saturdays. 
Okay, on the market on Saturdays, yes? I normally am at the Value Mart in Tweed on Sundays, but not with the pandemic. But that is my address and phone number and all. Okay, perfect. Well, uh, I'll definitely make sure I put up your address and your phone number. And if anybody's interested in reading any of this local history, I can't think why you wouldn't want to because what's better than knowing knowledge is the key, right? That's right. And uh, That's amazing. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking some time and sitting down with me here and discussing and showing me all your amazing books that you've written. They're all actual facts. There's no fiction. That's amazing. I know I was introduced from my father because he bought this one back at the Tweed store and I actually wrote it and it's, it's great. It's amazing. You're a, you're a great writer and I, we appreciate what you're doing and thank you for passing on some local history. So here's his address and all of his good stuff like that. So I'll also put that up at the bottom of the episode. So check out this local author from Tweed. Thanks guys. I did give you a boost. <laughs> That's the only thing I fit in Avengers. The <laughs> shoots. The shoots. I gave him a shirt I mean, one time because the big shoot. I was gonna say, if we're talking, talking the big like, shoot. No. I said, I don't yeah. fit in your shoots. They gave him a shirt to wear one time, man. You come up to here, right? Yeah. I'm like, holy fuck, man. You rolled sleeves up. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. It's like it's it's extra large, man. Like I mean, the body for sure is gonna fit, but he has to get special shirts. I think. <laughs> I went, to, uh, I went to the big and tall store one time, yeah. legit, and I went in there and I was like, all right, this is my size, and Buddy laughed in my face. He was like, good. It's like, dude, this is the big and tall, not big or tall. Big or tall. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? I was like, where do I go? He's like, I don't know, man. You go to the Walmart. Like, I don't know, they're not gonna have your size anyway. You're fine. <laughs> Shoot, this is the big oh, one. Oh, is that why you roll up your sleeves? That's why I roll up my sleeves a lot. That's exactly why. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you get most of your clothes for, Andrew? You were saying you ordered some clothes from uh, California stuff oh, there, yeah, right? Yeah, fucking right. Get these fucking guys who just tailor shit up themselves, man. Because where do you get this stuff? I want to learn how to sew. I know. You know? I know. I, make this well, shit. Your mom I love one of a kind stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Your mom made you that sweater. Well, That's I'm just nice. making an awesome sweater. That's nice. I bought an old uh, pattern. I got sent over from Australia. There. It's from like the uh, 40s or something like that. All I tell the you, knits, man, you, can dress, this thing, man. <laughs> you can dress as old as you want, but. Unless you're making money, like that stuff's expensive. That's expensive stuff. Those guys know. dressed in mag, they didn't have clothes. But that's awesome. Right? I mean, like that's, but that's what I'm talking about. That's what I love about like this. What we do, right? Like yeah. the style, man. You literally order a pattern, pattern yeah. from Australia. And now you get your mom to sew it, so you can wear a shirt that no one else wears that's on stage. Right. That's, that's awesome. Right. That's what you guys, the bees need, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I love it. Uh, like you said a long time ago, I wish we would all adopt wearing. I wish I could, I, I could get to a point where I could wear this every day. I wish I wish it wasn't suitable for you not to wear that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Like if you wear your pajamas out, you should be shot. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Picked up and plopped. It. <laughs> that's. Uh, you can have it. Yeah, it's all good. It's all wrong, bro. It's all good. I love it. This is what we're talking about. They man. know it. Say, man, this is my podcast mentality of it, man. I want it to be open. Yeah, I want I, to be free. I, agree, yeah. I want people to know who the bee's knees are. And if it's if I it's like it. if people don't want you to know who you are, you guys shouldn't be the bee's well, knees. Let's, 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 let's give them a Sierra Apparel, okay? Oh, I like that. I want to see one of those like horns that. here soon, boys. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. All right, we'll do Sierra Apparel. So this here is a uh, this little chick, man. She's on YouTube all the time. Anyways, that I watch. And uh, her name is Sierra Farrell. Well, she sings uh, awesome, awesome music from, it's all her own stuff, but it's like got that old flair to it. She's one of my favorites for sure, man. You guys gotta check her out out there. She's cool. So we're gonna try one of her uh, newest songs. And we kind of, we kind of bees knees a little bit, but I don't think she'd be too mad. So. <laughs> I don't think so. <clears throat> this is called, uh, Bells in every chapel or something like that. I swear the bells in every chapel bring the day that I met from high in the hills 
Birds are singing, singing of you and me. From out in the crowd, you were glowing, you were glowing without even knowing. Yeah, but from way over here, the crystal clear, and you were the one for me. Yeah, but life it ain't so simple. Life it ain't so kind. Yeah, life it leads you someplace to be all alone. Where you cry and you cry and you cry. Yeah, I swear the bells in a chapel ringing the day that I met. Your heart will never be mine. Yeah. In every bed, moment the day that you touched me, and you took my hand, where well, you told me one day that I would stay. Well, now I'm getting older, suddenly I see just what you were talking about. Yeah, but from way over here, the crystal clear. You were the one for me. Yeah, but life ain't so simple. That's right. Life it ain't so kind. Yeah, life could be to some place to be all alone. Well, you cry and you cry and you cry. Yeah, I swear the bells in every chat. Your heart never be mine. Never bring it so clear. You couldn't hear. Your heart would never be mine. <laughs> that is Sierra Farrell. What an artist. Mm -hmm. Great, guys. <laughs> so, Andrew's got a few of these upbeat songs that really can make you tap, and it's, uh, uh, yeah. If anybody knows me, Joel, I like my upbeat songs. <laughs> and I think we're gonna try and pressure Andrew into playing a little bit of horn here. Oh no, the horn! <laughs> oh yeah, we got we got we got some uh, horn here. <coughs> All right, we'll try. Yeah, the horn. So what is this horn here? Wow, uh, this horn here cost me a lot of money more than I thought. <laughs> 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 I ordered it from the United States, and by the time it came through with the exchange rate. Duty, shipping, everything. Well, this freaking horn is about three hundred dollars. <laughs> you could buy. Hey, what is it? Is uh, it? Is, is it a good? It's a kazoo. It's a kazoo. We call it the kazobo. The kazobo. The kazobo. Uh, the, yes, it's a kazobo. But this one here is the the nickel plated one. It's really, really supposed to be nice. Well, it should be for the price now. But uh, it's supposed to be gold plated. Yeah, you could buy a real horn with like balance. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andrew, it's it's pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, so the horn is not a perfect art, but we uh, we have fun this. with it. Man. We definitely have fun. <laughs> with it. it definitely brings the crowd. This is the beast. This is the best. Thing. Let's see what we can do with it. Eh? Actually, she don't drop, man. She's pretty heavy. Man. So what's this song called? This one here we'll do yeah, on our old, annual time. Yeah, another old 20s Jimmy song. Jimmy Rogers song, so he didn't pull the horn, but we do. Now there are two Jimmy Rogers, if you choose to look them up. This is the older one. Are you the old lady? I just received 
spicy guy, but we will get in and test out the spicy stuff because she loves the killer beans. But can you run me through some of the stuff you have going on here? Okay, well, we have everything that we've grown. We grow organically. Uh, we, we make our own salsas. We've got cowboy candy, which are candy jalapenos. Uh, I make fermented hot sauces, uh, pickles and beans, uh, as well as fresh mushrooms and dried mushrooms. That is awesome. And whereabouts is your farm located? Uh, just north of Napanee in a town called Robin. Okay, yep, yeah, yeah. Definitely know of Robin there. And how can people get a hold of, like, be able to come and get some of your stuff other than at the market here? Uh, they can come to the farm. Uh, the address is on the sign over there and give us a call at 905 623 Okay, perfect. I'll put the information along the bottom. I like to I put up all that stuff so I'll get your. Um, I'll, I'll get your card and all that good stuff. But uh, I also see, so down here, what's going on here? We got mushroom jerky? Yes, it's uh, made with oyster mushrooms that we grow. And it's just like meat jerky, but it's made with mushrooms. Okay, and lion's meat. I, I hear lots of stuff about lion's meat. Like, what is, that's another mushroom, right? Yeah, it's uh, It's really good for your brain, isn't it? Yeah, it helps with memory and cognition. It helps people that have uh, stomach ulcers or irritable bowel syndrome. It helps with depression and anxiety. Uh, regenerates nerves, whole, whole lack of things. And what was uh, what would a package of, of lion's mane about that big be worth? Uh, that size is uh, 60 capsules, and it lasts a month, and it's 40 dollars. That's, that's awesome. Okay, cool. Very, very, very cool. Well, should we do a little taste test? Sure. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna hand this off. So go ahead, up right up here, Annabelle. Okay. So I got my beautiful wife today here. She's gonna do some taste testing. So that one was the killer bean, was it? Yeah, it's killer bean. Fantastic. <laughs> Delicious. So those are really good in your Caesars and all that yeah, stuff, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Or just straight out of the jar too. <laughs> good stuff. That's awesome. Well, we really appreciate you taking a couple minutes with us. No problem. And uh, like I said, I'll put your information up on the bottom for everybody to come find come find you, but you can also find you right down here at the Belleville Market. What do you guys... So I see that you're not plugged in and I see that you're not plugged in. Is that the way you guys usually play? 
Yeah, we, I don't know, we fight every time we plug in, it's a disaster. <laughs> I honestly, to tell you the truth, because so. we've, we've grown up playing like this, I'm still learning how to sing into a microphone and all that stuff. So what I see we have here is a condenser mic, right? Yep. Condenser mic, man. So on episode two, we showed you the shirt. 58, which is just a singing, and there's a 57, which is a vocal, or like it's just an instrument mic, and this right here is a condenser mic, and then in episode one, we talked about um, putting phantom power on, and that is a condenser mic meets phantom power, and I don't know enough about it, maybe in an episode we'll learn yeah. about it, but I know you can sing from all the way around this microphone, and that's why you see these two pretty much standing here, the bass is being picked up through it, and the guitar is being picked up, and you're singing through it. Correct? Yes, yep. sir. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, to us, we find it makes the most raw, raw, natural sound that we we hear That's right, to ourselves yeah. when we're just standing here practicing. Uh, the only thing it does, it puts a little volume and a little bit of echo, which is super sweet, yeah. and uh, it works best for us. Yeah. The music we play is is mainly, it's not, I wouldn't want to like say it's for a certain amount, a certain group of people, but I mean, it's listening music. It is. It is. It's it's listening, listening music. music. Yeah. So when people generally, when people hear that old time stuff, they they stop what they're doing. They it's quiet now. It's quiet now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. places you play it or whatever people are listening. Uh, what are you trying to do? So, so what do we got here? We got is that a big old violin you got there in your hand? This is a big old violin. <laughs> we uh we bought it super small. We dipped it in water for two and a half, three months. Yes. Uh, trim the top leaves off. Yes. And. Uh, through now. That's what you got. Cool. I like right. it. So, uh, you know, do some bowing tonight for us, are you? I'm going to do a little bit of bowing. I don't do too much of it because it's, uh, it's a whole other monster, but uh, I love to try it. That's yeah, cool. So We'd love to shot. see you try, man. Yeah. That's awesome. It's, it's a beautiful another thing you're it doing. It takes so. us into a different... Uh... Quick disclosure, don't put your violin in water. <laughs> 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 it does not turn out like this. It won't look like this. <laughs> 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 so this one is um this is a newer newer style kind of a song for us I guess <laughs> Sweet 
That was really, really, that was amazing, guys. Thanks, man. Here, Ryan, why don't you step up right to about where that green dot is there, and let's uh, go over your instrument, why? Because well, sure. because it, it's such a big bad boy. Yeah. Why don't we just take a look over it right now while we're standing sure, here? So what do we got here, Ryan? So, so you, you go ahead. Yeah. You tell me all about it. This is uh, a four-string bass. I think you can get them five, six. I'm sure you can get them all over the place. But uh, what do I? Where do I start? This is a. Uh, We'll go over everything on it anyways. This is the peg, goes up inside the machine, pulls out, you can put it at pretty much any height. I put it nice and tall, so I need it nice and tall. <laughs> I'm not actually 100% that I, I'm playing it at the right height, technically. But uh, I like it super tall so I can find where all my frets are. And it works for you, so that works, works right? Um, so you said you got... Uh... I have a pickup that we've installed mainly for when I'm playing in the bigger band stuff with like the Jaybirds and stuff, we need more sound. Um, and it's a, it picks up vibration. So I have it wedged underneath the bridge here and then it's pressure fitted in there. That's kind cool. of thing with the strings. And then- So obviously the vibrations just come out and it sends a signal, which is, which is what it is, right? Yeah. That's exactly, really cool. Yeah, and it, it, it's true to sound to be honest. When it's plugged in, it sounds pretty darn true through the amps. So it, it's, it's amazing to think how they can actually it's the vibration that can give you that sound like yeah. so clear, right? Yeah, it's, it's super, super. It shouldn't clear. make sense. You feel like you should have a microphone on it, but there's no microphone there. Yeah, it's exactly. just a pad, copper yeah. pad. That's yeah. cool. And so, yeah, go ahead. No, you first. I was just gonna ask you. Do you know what brand it is, or is there a, is there a type yeah, on so it at all? Or there is. I, and I knew for the longest time off the heart, off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, let me see that light. Like, I think it's an Eastman. Why is it? Uh, you know what? It's on my gig bag. Oh, okay. There we go. It's an Eastman. That's cool. Yeah. Three quarter bass. So this is not the full size bass. There's a bigger one. That's right. And the bigger one they call the mule because it's such a big, right. fat bottom I girl. I don't know how people carry it around because I have to bring my pickup truck. <laughs> I have no idea. That's cool. But yeah, so I got this. Uh, I was blessed enough to have a good friend of mine lend me his while I joined. Uh, a band and kind of got my the feel for it and uh saved up some cash and bought this one that's cool uh, so uh do you want to tell a story about it should we I tell do, a story i would love to tell a story <laughs> um so if we zoom in here we did a we did a gig not a gig we did a, a recording you can go on YouTube and check it out. It's called uh, Gems on VHS. Gem <laughs> Gems in the Rough. Oh, Gems in the Rough. The Sterling J Birds Keep It Clean. It was rough. Well, the song went the well. The song went well. Uh, but anyways, we were down at the Sugar Shack doing that recording and uh, everything went well. And on the way up, we chose to think it'd be easier to put this in a motorized vehicle, an ATV of sorts. And uh, it didn't like it. <laughs> and it was a cold day. It was a cold winter day, and uh, the neck broke. So what happens is these necks are actually just pretty much glued in, <laughs> yeah, fitted right. in like a bit of a V, and then glued in in a dovetail. 
and we hit it about here, mm -hmm. and it ended up about here. Yep. So luckily, we didn't hit it here. But snap the scroll. That's called the scroll. Uh, if it had snapped that off and that, then it'd be a lot more expensive. So we spent a couple bucks. Met a new person called Luke Mercier. Was it right? That's right. He's a local luthier. Hopefully, one time in these actual episodes, it'd be really cool to go meet him and yeah, take great. him into into his place. There, that's a yeah. good guy to know, and he's yeah, got a lot of awesome. information. So we got this fixed. We actually brought the neck out. That's right. What about a half it. inch? Three three eighths. Yeah. Look and uh, to tell you the truth, Brian says he likes it better because it's out a little further, better action. Yeah, it works much nicer. I think he's being half a uh, glass half full more than. Truthfully, no. <laughs> For the most part, playing wise, I don't notice a big difference. But when I use this bow, it makes a big difference because prior to this, the I don't know what you call it. I guess the concave, the arc. Yeah. The arch of this is supposed to be set up like a violin, so that you can get to, to every string. Before I was hitting, I was hitting two strings. Gotcha. And it was causing me to play a lot sloppier. So it does make a big difference with the bow. Cool. So, That's yeah. awesome. So my fingers don't bleed as much, so maybe it does make. A That's really cool. So you just down here, you get that red thing on there, and just a little tuner to figure yeah, out where so you are. I tune it here, and then I've I've actually started to flip it to this side. Cool. And see if it's still in because. I don't trust it. So. Oh, side to side, yeah. yeah. That's neat. And the strings on it, they're not normal bass strings. They Are they a coated no. string or or maybe not? I, I, think, I don't know if they're coated as much as I they, think they feel like they're flat. Wow. They are flat, right? Yeah. Yeah, because on these necks, as I said, there's no frets on these necks. And it's, yeah. it's a so they, different beast. They feel like literally playing just the wire. Huh. That's neat. <laughs> but yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for showing me that, Ryan. Yeah, no, no. So like you said, you plug in sometimes. When you plug in, do you have your own bass amp or what do you do? I do, do you... have a bass amp, an old 70s trainer amp. But typically, uh, we usually run through a PA. We run through, if I do plug into this, it's that old Taylor amp. Is that the Taylor amp? It's an acoustic. It's an uh, acoustic uh, trainer. Amp. Trainer, rather. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so typically I don't have to bring my bass amp because especially when I'm playing in the bigger band, we have such a big sound that it, it my bass amp wouldn't handle it so yeah and the nice thing about what we figured out is these these bows l2s and l1s right yeah. those things have they got a nice little 10 inch sub down on the bottom you can plug straight into those and right into them, yeah. you do a di in and it works out perfect yeah the one thing i did find too when i was plugging this thing into a normal bass amp is how much uh it doesn't the bass amps that i've plugged it into don't like it because of how bassy it is i think also so, um the the how big of a body yeah like the the sound f in it, right? Yeah, exactly. Like you plug into a bass amp, usually using like a, a fiberglass bass, right? That's right. There's no sound. Or a wood bass, sorry. Yeah, you know. exactly, exactly. But now you got this big old body here. Yeah. It's really awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks, Ryan. I really appreciate you showing us all that and uh, can't wait to see the next thing you guys are up to. Yeah, thank you, too. So, Bye. as much as we cover 99% of the music, we did have a couple of what we're trying to work on. So, this one here is uh, called the COVID Blues and it's about the times that we're going through right now been crazy for everybody I'm sure but anyways this is our uh, thoughts on it all <laughs>
I'm gonna break free from this prison they call CUVID. So that one's an original then. That is original. Yeah. Have you guys uh well actually we'll we'll touch in on this on the next ep or on the next little interview here, but uh you guys got an album out at all or can we get your music anywhere? Where can you where can people find some of your music right now, guys? Well, right now they gotta come to the garage here and listen. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no album, no, no. Good for you, I yeah. love you. <laughs> there is a few there are a couple songs you guys on YouTube, right? I think here and there. Yeah, you we type in the bees knees. Oh, yeah. Maybe you type in the bees knees. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Check that out. That'd be cool. Yeah. We're. I don't know how the old page works. You can't find that on, mm -hmm. on social media anymore. I'm sure because it's deleted. What's that? You guys had a page on what? We had a page on Facebook. What you guys deleted it because it was too new school? Uh, uh, no, it was mixed it up. Was in, it was associated with in a different account profile, so. and uh, it was a, it wasn't it wasn't easy to get to. We got to make a real one. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Just well, well yes. keep your eyes open for that. And I, I suggest right. you guys do like an Instagram thing, maybe. That's a good idea. People, too, yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm old school. We're from the twenties. Really I know. I'm old school, right? It's, yeah. So you gotta right. send if you if you want to get a hold of you guys, just because you're from the twenties, you gotta send what. Like the Pony Express, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can order a 45 or yeah, a 78 a, or something. Yeah. Send a pigeon to fly. <laughs> <laughs> bring a message. <laughs> send a smoke signal. Send a smoke signal. <laughs> Some of the sort. That's cool. I like it. All right. So there you have it. That's episode three of What's Happened with Joel. I'm really enjoying myself doing all this. I'm having a great time. Meet a bunch of cool people. I want to thank a few people in this episode. I want to thank the, the B-Sides, formerly the B's Knees. Um, as I said, they changed their name to the B-Sides because they played the B-Side of every record. So back in the day, a record would have an A-Side, would have like two great tracks on it, and then have the B-Side that were unknown tracks, and those are the tracks that the B's knees like to play, or the B-Sides like to play. So now they've changed the name to the B-Sides, it just seems to fit. Um, I want to thank those guys, as you've seen in the episode, flowed, it was kind of long, but that's okay because we have lots to talk about and we're easy to talk to each other. So. Uh, I want to thank Ryan and Andrew so much for having me out, and it was so much fun. Cool to see your instruments and all that good stuff. Um, next, I want to thank I want to thank Emily and Peter Mewitt because uh, the honey that we got from them, we put in our tea every single day, and it get rid of sugar, and it's not pasteurized, right? So that means it's all natural, and it's delicious, and it's can't say enough about it. And I also want to thank the author from Tweed Milton. Uh, I got a book, Nerves of Steel, and it's quite interesting. All real stuff and it's real history there. So uh, next is Fulton Farms. We uh, got the kicking beans. They're delicious right out of the jar, like you said, and they are really good in Caesars, I hear that Anna tells me. So go check out Fulton Farms. Um, we got some of that lion mane, lion's mane mushroom capsules, and uh, it's supposed to help with our memory. So we'll see here. I say oh, a lot, so maybe it'll help. Uh, September 26th. Downtown Belleville, one to four, Porch Fest. Go check it out. Me and a bunch of great artists out there. Go support your local artists. Uh, that night, the Sterling Jaybirds are gonna be playing down at Beast Store 116 around seven o'clock. <clears throat> bunch of bands all the way from like one to like 10 o'clock that night. Beast Store 116, out back, gonna be crazy, crazy. A lot of great performers. So like I said, go check out Porch Fest in Belleville. The Beast Store 116, birds will be playing there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So one last thing I want to touch in here is uh, I like to say things out loud so that way I'm pretty much held accountable for them. And so this is kind of like my goal thing. I like to set goals because the days can go by and you can kind of get in slumps and get depressed because you have nothing to work towards and nothing to going on. So I like to write down my goals because that way I'm accountable for them. Even if it's what I have to do today, like pick up dog food, pick up milk, pick up my daughter from school kind of things. <laughs> it's my goal to finish, finish for the day. So that's what I like to do. And my goal for this what's happening is I wanna do two months. So let's say I'm gonna do eight to 10 episodes, hold me to it, and if I don't do it, you guys all can, yeah, poke me in the eye or whatever you wanna do. Uh, so like I said, so let's do this for eight to 10 episodes and when I'm done that, we'll see how I feel about it and if we wanna keep going, because there's lots of amazing artists 
and performers around here. So let's see what we can do, right? Uh, next coming up, it's gonna be Steven Tefford. I went over to his house, he uh, sharpened up all my knives and he showed me through all of his collection. He's a knife maker, it's really, really cool. And the guy's got a crazy soul and it really comes out when he sings. So you'll see that on episode four. Some other surprises coming up there. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying it and that's what's happening. So thanks guys, peace and love. And subscribe to our channel. Go check out Sterling Jaybirds. Go check out the B-Sides. Uh, check it out. See you guys. You win fall, you win fall, you win fall. Everything made a run that died to dash. Just reaching the tail, pulling out the catch. You win fall. Never really said a bunch of random shit let me in this bed. I was just chilling at my own reception. Win fall, but decided to cop an erection. So what the hell you win for? Paper, scissors. Selling rock, rolling tape, sipping scissor, jumping through pitch of windows. It's really quite simple. It's a spark in the dark, ignites up the crystal, spending life trying to fight the pistol. Another 25 more just to watch him bleed.